right guys welcome back to the channel just thought uh do a little update on the bikes so today i'm on the um black 99 suzuki hibusa um taking it a little bit easy as you can see the roads aren't great um plus this is his first real ride since doing all the work this winter so it's a bit of a shakedown uh, this one, the black one and the copper one went through the MOTs with no advisories a couple of days ago. Yesterday I did take the copper bike out. Boy, did she ride nice. Um, so today it's just a little, uh, a little shakedown. Get my eye back in a bit. Out with mate Simon with his uh, KTM 1290 Super Duke. That's a beast of a bike as well. I'm hoping he's going to let me do a video on it. Quite nice. So, um, yeah, recap. What have we done on this this winter? Uh, so, I can't remember now. We did the clutch. Had to replace that cracked swing arm, all new swing arm bearings. Rear shock bearings, rear shock, uh, obviously a service. I didn't do a video on it, but I did the um, valve clearances as well, they were all good. Um, all the hydraulics, the clutch and brakes and that, they got uh, overhauled. New pads, new chain, new sprockets. Um, what else did we do? Oh, we replaced all the uh, the brake hoses. So yeah, uh, quite a bit of work. Um, mechanically, everything's done on this now. So um, next winter we'll concentrate on the. Uh, uh, well, assuming I don't get rid of it, um, which I don't think I will. So um, next winter is all about the cosmetics. problem is with the first ride out of the year is uh, you never really know how bad the roads have got over the winter I mean, it hasn't been a particularly cold winter but we have got third, third world roads over in Sussex so the bike yeah so far so good seems to be going nicely new clutch oh yeah we've changed the throttle cables as well that's made a massive difference as expected um the throttle's almost bloody thought control now so you won't be going crazy make sure the bike's all right weather was bloody lovely yesterday the sun was out it must have been a balmy 14 degrees I reckon yesterday it was lovely uh, today's a bit overcast and chilly any other time the E wouldn't go out today, I don't think not for a, uh, but it is only March Another month or two, hopefully we'll see some uh, warmer weather. Could put a um I put a photo post up on Instagram and Facebook the other day. Uh, asking what uh, what bike what my next bike should be. I've got a few in the rest restoration pile. Um and I will get down to the choice of two, uh, 1987 GSXR 1100 or um, the 1984, 1985 GSXR 400 and uh, quite surprisingly 99% of the people at answer wanted me to do the 400 next so that's going to be the next bike up on the uh, on the ramp um, 
the 400 has done very little in the way of mileage. I, I think it's about 14 and a half thousand kilometers from memory. Um, so what's that, 9,000 say miles? Um, but she has seen better days and she's had no real love in the past, I don't think. So I think it's gonna be quite an in-depth, uh, it's not gonna be a full-on restoration, but it's uh, gonna be quite an in-depth so clean up, tidy up, recommissioning. Um, again, all the brakes are going to need stripping. And I know the front calipers are sort of seized. Uh, wheel bearings, you know, the usual things, chain sprockets, the usual surfaces and stuff. Um, Paintwork. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of do on that one. But uh, I don't want to spend stupid money on it because it's, it's dead money. The, the bikes don't really fetch a great deal. Um, it's, it's more. Uh, more to bring back memories because uh, I had one of those 400s back in 92-ish. Couldn't afford the insurance on a 750, I was only 20. Um, and then th th this 400 I've got, the opportunity came up to buy it really cheap. Um, so, for why not? Weirdly enough, parts are actually easier to get for it now than they were back in 92. I, the one I had had a few issues and uh, it's a Japanese import they never imported them to the uk and um trying to get parts back then was ridiculous but uh, now with yahoo auctions in japan and ebay and places like that um parts were a lot easier to get so i'm hoping we can make a good job of that 400 that's going to be um i'm going to start that project anytime now really um no plans to have that riding in the near future but if I can get that to a stage where it's only the cosmetics in the winter it'd be quite nice because uh, I can just spend um, spend next winter not doing major mechanical stuff just literally getting stuff tied up so anyway, that's enough for the 400 back to the high bus up can't lie so far so good Everything's working as it should. Clutch feels good. Brakes feel as good as they get with these uh, crappy six-pot calipers. Should really put the four pots on, but I'm trying to keep the uh, bushes as standard as I can. Um, the copper one's 100% standard. Nothing aftermarket on that at all. This, the only aftermarket things don't really matter. Is um, I put braided hoses on and. Um, Got an aftermarket from my guard on at the moment. Looks like everyone's got the same idea. I think we need some really high heavy rain to wash these roads and then if they could follow up with six months of uh, continuous sunshine, we very much appreciated. Bike seems to be handling pretty well. So, um, obviously, last winter I, re I rebuilt the front end, all new headstock bearings, uh, new fork seals, or seal, you know, new fork oil, etc. etc. Got a good old service. Um, this winter was the um, back end, as I've already said, which I did videos on. Um, so, yeah, she's. Um, Handling the bat as well as a bush of handles. I'm going to throw around too much with cold roads, but not today anyway. I can definitely feel the uh, rear suspensions now actually <laughs> doing something. And of course we got rid of that hoofing great big crack on that swing arm that um, found when we were ripping it apart. So that 
maybe a good thing. She's definitely up there now with the copper one. I will we'll do a video on the uh, copper bike. wonder about some of these twats on the road didn't you oh look there's a gap pull out just to fucking do 20 mile an hour under the bloody speed limit still the way this fucking world's going at the moment another 10 years and I'll be able to sue them for uh, not allowing me my basic human right of achieving the speed limit or something. I'm sure it won't be long before there's some weird lefty group that uh find something to complain about with that. Oh, dinner. I've been down here since I made a video on this road testing my uh, chin mount.
plucky you know. and the surface is uh, not as good as it was then a little bit scary there's so much fucking crap on the road surface then that last corner that's feeling that's feeling a little bit <laughs> I thought that was the case. I'm gonna go and touch. I had to pull over, it was going like that. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm gonna go and turn around. Yeah. <laughs> He's definitely got a bird's bladder. <laughs> so here we are. Let's do some off roading. Baron Von Grumble can uh, go green lane in on a GSXR, why not try it on a Hayabusa? Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> right. <coughs> Don't think we want to see him get his uh, Chipolata out. So we'll turn around and wait for him down here. Yeah, so the old girl, she was clean the other day, I took her out for some photos. She was clean, but I washed her again then, before the MOT. So now she needs another clean. Not really sure there's much more I can tell you about. I mean, she, yeah, she's riding all right. Riding, well, no, she's riding more than all right. She's riding fine. And as soon as we get the, as soon as the roads are a bit cleaner and the temperature a bit higher, then, uh, throw around and say the roads feel a bit skittish and still at the moment I think it's still a bit green come on chat any more free shakes it's a wank <laughs> starfish valentine <laughs> come round and polish my starfish go on, mate. Well, the roads are so dirty. See what I mean at the moment? I don't know if the camera picks it up, but it's just this thin film of well, wood. Not thin there, is it? Just mud everywhere. And, uh, the problem is, you go barreling around the corner, lose the front end, that's it, you've had it. Couple that with a shitty road surface. 
Cara. I get it. The Indian space program's far more beneficial to the uh, taxpayers of the UK than actually having some roads that you can uh, use safely. Don't even start me off on potholes. The problem is with a pot pothole, it fills up with water and you never know if you're heading towards a bloody pothole or a puddle. I think the idea there, car driver, is um, to give the cyclist plenty of room without killing the motorcyclist. Keep the speed nice and low from, uh, if you saw it on the camera, that biker standing there patting his head. referring to maybe it was that speed checkpoint there now this is the other thing I've got nothing nothing against speed cameras and but they don't put them in casualty areas anymore they're just they always park up here we know we can get a few quid or if it's not about the money sometimes, it's about the... Uh, the posh residents have been complaining about excessive speed and noise of motorcycle vehicles. You don't, you don't see speed cameras in bloody poor areas. When was the last time you saw a speed control area outside of school? I mean, I know they do get them outside schools, but not very often. But you come out on a country road during the summer, and it's full of fucking 90 year old fucking women trying to champion in the cause, stand there in their fucking high visits that are three times too big for them. Going, Maureen, Maureen, I think that was a Honda. Book him, Dano. There's more of a fucking, I don't know, old people used to go play bridge, didn't they? Or, go and sit in a park. Now, it's like, I want to be a speed watch coordinator. And I hold them in contempt as much as I do those twats that wear polite notice fucking high vises. On plate. Very nice, mate. Let me know how much your balloon payment is. Officially two maybe three miles since Simon last needed the piss, which is this is good. I'll get him some tenor men for his birthday. What if Alpine stars do piss pads for motorcyclists?
also we're only a few days away from hopefully uh, the generation 3 hybrids are hitting the shops so um, I've got my name down with three dealers for a test ride I'm oh, going to get one going to get one I mean, obviously, owning a couple of them, I love the look of the genera Generation 1 Hybrid. So. The Generation 2, I don't like it. It's, it's too sort of fat and bubbly, and that tail unit just looks like it's sort of like bent like a banana with the puff of fish eyes of the indicators. And I, just, I don't like the look of the Gen 2. But the Gen 3, that's ticking some boxes on the looks front. I like it. Um... Where you going, Tom? Okay, wherever I guess. Um, yeah, there's been a few negative remarks said about the Gen 3. Um, not that much different to a Gen 2. Well, Suzuki are claiming 550 changes. Um, I mean, for me, the looks. Um, the, electro the electronics I could take or leave. Um, but, you know, they appeal to new, newer riders who are only known electronics, I guess. Um, it'd be nice to have the uh, lean angle indicator. I don't really need to know percentage of um, braking power because. Uh, I already know that most of my braking's on the front, but I suppose that made for some interesting uh, GoPro footage, wouldn't it? You know, uh, that dash, and I'm glad the um, Gen 3 stuck with the dials. Um, yeah, I, I, I like that. I say if I. If there have been some reviews out, or I've got a test ride one, I'd probably put a bloody deposit down on one, but... The only thing with the Gen 3 is, um... The price. It's a lot more than the Gen 2 was, and it's, uh... It's weighing in at 16 and a half grand, and there isn't really... There isn't, well, there isn't any deal of discounts. Um... You know, Suzuki won't let them discount it, and if you do manage to get anything off, it's actually coming out of the dealer's pocket. Um... So that's that's the big thing for me. But but 16 and a half compared to everything else on the market nowadays isn't isn't too bad. But it's still a lot of money. But motorcycles have gone the same way as cars, where they've introduced PCP, and no one looks at the total figures or anything anymore. They just go, oh, 200 pound a month. I can afford that. But it's not too, it's not just 200 pound a month, is it? You know, if you fucking dink it, scratch it, or whatever, then there's, there's charges. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and if you put 16 and a half grand on your dining room table I said right I'm going to go and swap that for a set of keys I don't know some thing make you think twice but money's just a it's just a number now it's just a digital thing but the price is what it is and whether I get one you know brand new or whether I wait for an next demo bike or a second hand one there'll be somebody out there that's bought the bought a Gen 3 to be fashionable and as soon as something else comes out wants to sell it um, I generally keep my bikes a lot longer um, the only other issue is I'd, I'd, I'd like to do my own servicing um, and that's a bit of an issue you can get a three year warranty on the new Hybus but and the genuine parts isn't an issue um, I only use sort of genuine really um, but it's, it's going to pay a deal of 60, 70 pounds an hour for something that I'd quite happily do myself. But again, that's part of new bike ownership, isn't it? Um, I am quite friendly with a Suzuki dealer. And, uh, well, they're actually going to give me a uh, genuine copy of um, the Gen 3 workshop manual 
too good at. And I'm in negotiations for uh, see if they're willing to let me do my own servicing. <laughs> Let's be honest, servicing wars it's gonna need cock all in the first couple of years anyway. And I do generally over service. So yeah. Yeah, watch your space. Never know, Gen 3 might pop up on the uh, on the videos. It certainly will, I'll do a video when I test ride it and uh, I'm going to wait for a nice day because I'm absolutely going to smash the fucking granny out of it if I can get a test ride. Um, yeah. It's not a very interesting ride so far. That's the other thing that's ruined the fun a little bit is um, the local police force keep tweeting out and putting on Facebook that <coughs> if you see anti-social riding, driving, speeding, noisy exhaust right on cue there Simon then um, send in your dash cam footage and report it I've never seen a calibrated fucking dash cam to speed in, but now you're just going to get everybody here to think, you know, everybody that sort of hates bikers or whatever, just going, I was on the A259 and this motorcycle came past me at 73 miles per hour. Ignore the rapists and murderers, I want this bloke stripped of his leathers, his license, then hung, drawn and quartered. <coughs> You'll be a little bit careful, he's gone charging off, but last time I came there were bloody traffic lights right around the corner. Confirm it's not getting any bloody warmer. Can also confirm that I'm not bloody petrol in it. So, shakedown ride's going well, which means over the weekend, tomorrow, whenever, I'll just quickly run around it, make sure nothing's uh, come loose. It won't, have it? Because uh, I always use a torque wrench, but you can never have to have a look, does it? it? Does sound good. It does sound good, that bike. That. <laughs> the moment I looked in my mirror, I ran over a bloody gra Oh shit, didn't see that. Very big stick. I'm not going to go charging off quite yet. Make sure. Uh... Imagine the conversation in this thing. Bloody crazy people! I'm doing 45! Which one? Oh, can we went this way? 
I must have. I don't think I've ever ridden that. Not a bad flubby little bit of twisty. Hmm, good choice. These are the roads the 400 was actually made for because uh, you could absolutely scream it down there feeling like you're just qualifying for MotoGP or CT or something and still not be going that fast. Also, the uh, I think the first time I've um, used the mic on the GoPro on the helmet. Be interested to see about the wind noise. Could do with an oily rag and a warm up. I hope and some petrol. Hopefully, that guy in size with Simon needs to drain his bladder again. Days where uh, they'd be handy to have all the electronics, ABS, traction control, wheel control, blah blah blah. I ain't got any of that. It'd be interesting to find out if he's, uh, if he's had any traction control. I don't think we would go fast enough, really, but. Or even a power mode, put a lower power mode, just yeah. Hang on, let me just adjust my power mode. Oh, that's it. It's adjusted. Oh, that's better. See, I'm looking at those thinking, cool, they'd be nice in a bit of pet with some salad and some mayonnaise or whatever. I bet he's looking over thinking, <laughs> yeah, well, I know what he's thinking. Put a sheet. Simon, I'm going to need fuel at some point. Right, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. When the weather's nicer, he's letting me ride that. I 
can't lie, I think I'll probably have to spank it. Anyway, I think that's probably a good place to end the video. Nothing really exciting happening. Higher Buster's working absolutely fucking stunning, as was the copper one yesterday. And uh, I'll do another ride video when the weather's a bit better and I can get a bit leery or something. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. And uh, more rides and tool time coming up very shortly. Take care.